Hey everyone! Hola a todos! This is Jahaira. And this is Stephanie. And welcome to Cuento Crimen Podcast. Y aquí on the Cuento Crimen Podcast, we are a true crime podcast and we bring a new case every Wednesday. Cada miércoles. And these are cases that don't get much media attention, so chances are you haven't heard of some of these cases. And we cover these cases in Spanglish. Así que agarra tu abuelita, tu abuelito, tu mamá, tu papá, a quien tú gustes, and come join us every Wednesday for a new true crime case. So, Rosita nació en el año 1993 y su mamá era Rosa Delgado. And like we just said, Rosa was the mom, Rosita was the daughter. Y su papá era Julio Camacho. Pero her parents are not together. We're not too sure of what the relationship looked like or why it was that they weren't together. But we want to infer that things between the parents weren't the best. And, you know, they all did live in Hartford, Connecticut. And in fact, Julio was part of the Hartford police. And even though Rosa and Julio were not together, Julio did provide financially for his daughter, but not by choice. Rosa aplicó for state benefits y el estado de Connecticut ordenó que Julio le pagara 200 dólares a la semana por su hija Rosita. I mean, as you should, right? Like, you should be responsible for your children. Pero a Julio como que no le pareció esto. He was already supporting three other children from his past relationship. And so now he was going to, you know, also provide for Rosita. And on top of that, he had a new relationship. He was now helping his second wife raise her children. So like child support for four children. And then on top of that, helping raise his partner's children. It could be a lot. Pero pues como, you know... I don't know. I just believe that you should be responsible for your children. Mm -hmm. But it did seem like Julio was a bit bothered porque él después le pidió a, you know, I guess the court order or whoever is in charge, que le pusieran pausa a los pagos hasta que se hiciera una prueba de paternidad. So it seems like he was questioning Rosita. Y pues sí, ¿verdad? También es bueno que él compruebe, ¿verdad? Si tiene una duda, yeah. like, también tiene you know, la opción de, you know, confirm, right? Mm -hmm. um, pero, you know, lo, lo que estábamos leyendo se siente como que no tenía una buena relación con Rosa and they didn't, you know, they weren't co-parenting, mm -hmm. you know, at the best of their ability. We didn't read much about this topic. I think it's just kind of easy to infer que ellos no se llevaban bien, but it's not like it was an issue. Like, it was just kind of like, okay, we had a child together. It is what it is now kind of just help me raise her type of thing. Like, it didn't seem like Rosa minded not having him there, you know? Mm -hmm. Entonces, era claro que Julio no tenía interés de estar en la vida de su hija. I think we also read somewhere that there was an age gap between Julio and Rosa. En el año 1997, Rosa tenía 21 años y Julio tenía 37. So yeah, there is, you know, an age gap. Uh, Rosa is really young. She's only 21 years old. And Julio, ya es un señor de 37 años. So, yeah, that's like background information on all the people involved in this case. Entonces, ahora, like, kind of back to, like, the story. El 24 de octubre del año 1997, Rosa tenía que ir, you know, to the grocery store. But she only had a limited amount of cash. So she was really there just to get you know, the things that she really needed for her and her three daughters. Rosa dejó en su casa a su niña mayor and she left her in charge of her five-month-old daughter. Entonces Rosa nomás se llevó a Rosita con ella. And after this trip to, you know, the nearby store, because it was, you know, fairly close to where they lived, um, Rosa y Rosita nunca regresaron a casa. Both were reported missing pero día tras día no sabían nada de ellas and it wasn't until November that a woman's body was found. A month after Rosa and Rosita disappeared, a woman's body was found floating in Columbia Lake in western New Jersey. And just so y'all know, um, I think this body of water was only about three feet deep. Era claro que el cuerpo era de una mujer, pero le faltaba la cabeza y las manos el cuerpo. So, you know, obviously, like, it looks very intentional, like this person, you know, something was done to mm -hmm. them, right? Like, they were obviously killed, you know? Yeah, y también, like, you know, like, why were her arms missing? And, like, es como que, 
la persona responsable no quería que haya ninguna huella or anything, mm -hmm. you know, just trying to get rid of the DNA. Eh, honestly, it just like makes my stomach turn just to know que alguien es capaz de hacer todo esto. Just the fact that they already murdered her, like that's beyond scary. But the fact that you're still going to go that extra mile to like protect yourself, que no te da cosa hacer esas actions, you know, it's, it's scary. Sí, like, como, like, as we say in this podcast over and over, caras vemos, corazones no sabemos. Mm -hmm. Y pues, when they originally found the body, they had no idea who this was. And authorities just kind of named her the Lady of the Lake. And it stayed like that for two years. So, just to, like, clarify, so the body was found around the same time that Rosa and Rosita were missing. They mm -hmm. weren't connected yet, but it happened around the same time. Yeah. No fue hasta el año 1999, dos años de cuando fue encontrado el cuerpo, due to some DNA testing, they were able to identify the body as Rosa Delgado. Entonces, dos años después de su desaparición, Rosa fue encontrada asesinada. And for those wondering, el cuerpo de Rosita no fue encontrado con el de Rosa. So at this point, which is like two years after they originally go missing, Rosa was found murdered and Rosita was still missing. You know, it must be heartbreaking for the family. Like one heartbreak que Rosa fue encontrada así, you know, murdered and in that condition. Mm -hmm. Pero también another heartbreak to just wonder qué le pasó a Rosita, dónde está And did she have a similar fate to Rosa? Mm -hmm. Like, there's just so many questions. Or is she, like, hurting? Is she in pain? Is she being tortured? It's just endless questions, I feel like, when you have a missing family member. But anyways, back to the case. So, once they found Rosa's body, the prime suspect was, of course, her baby daddy, Julio. And the reason for this was because a witness had come forward saying that the day that Rosa and Rosita went missing, they saw Julio talking to Rosa nearby the store that she was last seen at. Y también la familia de Rosa dicen que días antes de que Rosa disappeared, Julio was coming around more often and calling her more often on the phone, showing up, spending time with her and with Rosita. And like, it was rare to them because he had never really been around. Mm -hmm. And then the red flag is that once Rosa disappeared, Julio just stopped showing Up. Like he wasn't reaching out to the family. He wasn't reaching out to, you know, go hang out with Rosita. And it's like, huh, you know, like, where's the concern about the whole situation? Well, yeah, because if you think about it, your daughter is missing. Like, okay, if you and your, you know, the mother of your child don't get along, totally understand that. But like, es tu hija Rosita la que no está aquí. You know, how is it that you were okay with being around, but then now when she really truly needs you, like, no estás allí. You know, I, I feel like que ahí demuestra sus colores verdaderos. Yeah, like that makes sense. I don't know, like, if Julio ever got confirmation, mm -hmm. right? If Rosita was his biological daughter. But, I mean, maybe he did, right? Because those, those results have to come in mm -hmm. whether Rosita is in the picture or not. Like, she's missing, but the results can come in. So, I don't know what happened about that. But, you know, let's not forget that Julio was questioning Mm -hmm. You know, being Rosita's father. A.K.A. that could have low-key been a motive, mm -hmm. right? And that's also exactly what the investigators thought. But the fact that Julio was a Hartford policeman definitely played a role in the investigation. Rosa's family believed that the Hartford department mishandled the investigation and tried covering up Julio's actions. Pero en el año 1998, Julio resigned from the department. Y él dijo que por problemas familiares, él se tenía que retirar. And that is when things start to, you know, unravel. Once he left the department, ahora sí la investigación truly began contra Julio. Y lo primero que encontraron fue que Julio le dijo a su hermano to be his alibi for the night that Rosa and Rosita went missing. And, you know, a lo mejor eso fue por algo, the fact that he had to claim, kind of be really fast with it, that he had mm -hmm. an alibi. Well, I feel like if he was innocent, like he wouldn't have needed to go to his brother, like, hey, I need you to be yeah. my alibi. Because he was not with his brother the night that it happened. Like, he's asking his brother to lie about the alibi. Mm -hmm. So, if he wasn't with your brother and he was with someone else, then let that someone else be yes, your alibi, you know? That's true, right? He yeah. should have just, like, yeah, like, claimed it to, like, authorities. Like, he does have an alibi, mm -hmm. but let them go 
talk to talk the brother to yeah you know, and confirm instead of like you going behind the, the, everybody's back and like making sure that brother will claim that you know they exactly. were together and another thing that we found along in our research was that multiple women came forward stating that julio sexually assaulted them while being on duty that is like, disgusting mm-hmm. like you are i don't know Haciendo esas cosas while you're wearing your badge that you swear to protect people, you swear to like stand for their rights and all that jazz. And then you do stuff like this. Like this is why people have trust issues. Like, you know, like why that whole relationship between like the people and the authorities is just it's so messed up. Like it's Mm -hmm. it's there's a lot of trust issues there. And this is why. Yeah, this is like really disgusting because he's like using his power to Mm -hmm. get like away with things, you know. All in all, a total of five individuals came forward with these allegations. Y eso que, you know, en el pasado, he had already been accused of things like this. Yeah, and it wasn't until in the year 2001 that Julio finally admitted to the rapes he had committed all the way back dating to the years 1995 and 1997. So that's a lot of years that have gone by and that he's just free and living his life. And he pled guilty. Julio did his time in prison and... But then he was released. And after that, he decided to move to Virginia. But now currently we don't know where he resides. Mm -hmm. But we do want to clarify that even though Julio was found guilty of the other cases that he committed, he was never named responsible for Rosa's murder nor for Rosita's disappearance. Las autoridades se encontraron, you know, questionable things about this case, but none of them were enough evidence to pin murder on him, which sucks because like, you know, we do see, you know, this big motive, Mm -hmm. but there isn't enough evidence to keep chasing it. Right. And I feel like that must be super frustrating for the investigators. He had motive y también él fue el último que lo con Rosa, trying to get his brother to be his alibi. I don't know. I just feel like there was... There was so much to work with, I feel like. Mm-hmm. Y like, you know, Steph and I, obviamente no somos expertas, pero it's just our opinion. You know, that's, I think to us, he does have a lot of red flags and I would have wished that they would have investigated him a bit more. Mm-hmm. Pero pues sí, desafortunadamente, hoy en el año 2023, still no one has ever been responsible for Rose's death. Y también Rosita nunca ha sido encontrada. And today she would be 29 years old. And um, we will include her picture and an age progression picture as well on our Instagram to shine some, you know, attention to this case. And, you know, hope that y'all like share. Who knows? Like mm-hmm. maybe, maybe someone has seen her or know something of this case. Yeah. You just never know. Or even like ella misma, like she was so young when it happened. Mm-hmm. So like maybe she was kind of like fooled into a new life. And if she sees and she hears like her own name, her own case, she might be able to dot, you know, the picture together and find her family. I mean, we've seen it happen with some cases, right? It's rare, pero puede pasar. Mm-hmm. And as for Rosa's other two daughters, her eldest daughter is now the one taking care of Rosa's youngest daughter. Uh, which I think is super heartwarming, especially after what they both been through. But it's still very heartbreaking, the fact that these girls lost their mother at such a young age. If you have any information about the death of Rosa Delgado or the disappearance of Rosita Camacho, please contact the Hartford Police Department at 860-757-4000. Si alguien tiene alguna información sobre la muerte de Rosa Delgado o la desaparición de Rosita Camacho, comuníquense con el Departamento de Policía de Hartford al 860-757-4000. And again, like, I know we say this a lot, but y'all already know how it is. Any small lead can honestly break a case. Entonces, si alguien tiene alguna información, les pedimos con todo el corazón to please call that in and just help Rosa's family have the justice that they deserve and Rosa have the justice that they deserve. And also just to have answers as to what happened to Rosita. Thank you so much for listening to today's case. We appreciate you all and we'll see you next week.